Welcome to using Dynamo with Python, how to overwrite the visual graphic settings. The very first thing I want to do is be able to select a few model elements. Um, I'll go ahead and set the red value to 255 and the rest to 0. I'll grab a fill pattern which will be solid. Um, and I'll add three input nodes. So I'm using Visual Studio's 2017 community, uh, and I'll get the import CLR. I'll import the uh, proto-geometry, which is the geometry inputs, um, and then I'll go ahead and get design script geometry. I'll just go ahead and import everything. Uh, and then I'll add the reference uh, Revit nodes, which is the unwrapper and the unit conversion between um, Revit and Dynamo. So the two XYZ, two type, um, is here, uh, and that's because uh, Dynamo's in meters, Revit's in feet. The next thing I'll do is get the Revit service, services, which actually contains the document. Um, and this will let you do uh, transactions um, and also get all the document information um, as far as the database is. So I'll just go ahead and get the document manager um, from the persistent. Um, and then I'll go get ahead and get the uh, transaction and I'll go ahead and import uh, the transaction manager as well. Um, and the last thing I'll do here is I'll grab the actual Revit API and that's just the standard Revit API that I that you work with. It'll give us the functionality to uh, set the override graphics and I'll just go ahead and import from um, from Autodesk and Revit's database and I'll just go ahead and import an asterisk means everything. Uh, here we go. I'll just grab the document from the uh, document manager uh, that I got earlier from Revit Services. And, um, I'll go ahead and get the uh, current database document. Uh, and then uh, here I'm going to do a definition. This way I can reuse this uh, snippet of code. And what I'm going to do is all the elements will be sent into the snippet of code. Uh, and um, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and return or send back out uh, of this little snippet of code the Autodesk.Revit database and I'll get the color. So um, I'm going to send it in the element of a color and return back a Revit color. So here I'll, I'll, I'll deconstruct it getting the red, the green, and the blue. Um, and that'll be sent in from the element that I sent in uh, elements red, green, and blue and that'll translate it back to a Autodesk or a Revit um, product instead of a Dynamo product. Um, just doing that conversion there. Uh, here I'll do another definition, which will be another snippet of code, which I'll send in multiple things into it. Um, and here I'm going to send in the element, um, the color which I've um, deconstructed to a Revit color, and then the fill pattern which I went ahead and set as the third uh, input. Uh, and here I'm actually going to get my override graphics settings from the Revit API uh, and I'll send that back to the OGS. I'll just call mine OGS just for simplicity, for quickness um, because of the, the um, IDE is not as quick as I'd like it to be. Um, and then from um, my override graphics settings, um, I'll go ahead and set the method uh, settings um, per, uh, projection fill color and I'll go ahead and send in the the Revit the Dynamo converted Revit color into it um, and then from here I'll go ahead and set the settings fill uh, pattern and this one you have to set the ID so from the fill pattern I'll just go ahead and get the ID number that the one I sent in from Dynamo um, and uh, again um, this will be for the cut I actually won't won't show the cut but it's 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 kind of to demonstrate that you can do the lines, the cut, um, and it's the same same scenario here. You'll you'll do the cu cut fill color and you'll send in the color that you like um, to override in the view that you're using um, and the fill pattern as well. So you can you can change these. Um, and if you look up through the um, document, uh, you'll find a variety of, of different ways that you can manipulate this override graphics as you can as a user. Um, so the last thing I'll do is I'll get the document and the active view and I'll, I'll set the element uh, override here and it'll take a couple inputs. It'll take the elements that I want to override 
um, and then in, it'll it'll take the um, the element ID and then the override settings. So this is why I'm going to I made it a definition. That way I can set multiple elements, and each one of the elements will will receive whatever that is, and I won't have to write this piece of code over and over again. Um, here's here's just my um, my inputs for the Python node. So here I'll just get the elements, um, and I'll go ahead and unwrap them. Um, and here I'll get the color, and I'll just send it straight up to the um, the convert color. A little mistake there. It needs to be an N. Uh, sometimes IntelliSense will will get a little bit extreme on me. Um, but this here, I'll send the convert color, uh, which will be the second input, and I'll send it up to the definition, which will um, return it back to colors, as in Revit color, or Revit API color. The last thing I'll do here is I'll get the fill pattern, um, and I'll go ahead and unwrap it, and, and I'll just call it fill pat. Um, and then I'm going to loop over this, or, or iterate, over the list of elements that were sent in by the user. So here I'll, I'll call my um, my iterator i, and every time it iterates, it'll start a new transaction. So the the transaction um, will be um, this. Ins I'll ensure it, and I'll send in the document. And then here is where I use the method that I created the override. Um, element, and I'll send in the the element itself, which will be I, because I'm iterating over. So each one will get the I, and then I'll send in the color, um, and then the fill pattern, and it'll go through each one of the elements um, and set the color and the fill pattern to it. And the very last thing I want to do here is end my transaction. Um, so I'll finish it off by saying transaction tax done and that's it I'll go ahead and just copy this uh, bit of code in here I'll go ahead and accept it I'll go ahead and um, come over here select some columns as my elements in my active view and I'll wire them up um, sending the color the dynamo color the fill pattern and run it so let's take a look at this debug it. Looks like I got a thing here in um in one of my lines. Line here. Looks like I oh filled ID. I'll just put ID there. The method, the API Revit API method is called uh, fill pattern ID. It's looking for the fill pattern ID. So I'll just go ahead and set that and then run it. So there it goes. It did the fill the fill for the current view and colored them red. And that's how easy it is. Anyways, for more uh, Revit API videos, please subscribe. Thank you.